Agricultural labor was the largest employment source in Europe. Agriculture workers often labored six days a week, from sunup to sundown. It was a family business and often more a lifestyle for families than just a mere job. This all changed when the Enclosure Act passed in Great Britain allowed wealthy landlords to purchase public fields and push out small-scale farmers, causing a migration of men looking for wage labor in cities. Horses started to pull machinery rather than oxen. The use of the sea drill was introduced. Crop rotation were introduced and some selective breeding of certain sheep started. The development of diesel and steam engines advanced transportation, making it possible to move crops, livestock and farming machinery and expanding markets and making farms more efficient. Through biotechnology, weed and insect resistant crops were created and farmers moved from mechanical and analog to digital technology. The Green Revolution increased the food production. The four pillars of food security is availability, access, stability and utility. Food security is when all people at all times have physical and economic access to sufficient, safe and nutritious food to meet dietary needs and food preferences for a healthy, active lifestyle. Food availability relies on two legs. First of all, production. First, we have to take into consideration the area that is available for production, which could lead to land constraints, and we have to look at our net return. Also, the yield of the product. It could rely on fertilizers, labor, and the technology involved. The next leg is about imports. Foreign credit plays a huge role, as well as how much a country can export, as well as food import prices. The per capita food requirement minus the food availability per population shows us what the food gap is. Availability is ensured when there is a reliable supply of food of sufficient quantity and quality for the entire population. Yield is the amount of a product being produced for agricultural or industrial purposes. Just like people, crops also need special minerals to keep them healthy and to have them yield their maximum potential. This is where fertilizers plays a very important role. The three main nutrients that plants need is nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. Due to the growing world population, crop outputs needs to increase drastically over the next few years. The primary way to do this is to get a higher crop yield. In the 1900s, there were six to seven rural dwellers for every urban dweller. These days, there are three urban dwellers for every two rural dwellers. A lot can be made of the fact that in 2008, for the very, very first time, the world's urban population exceeded its rural population. Hundreds of millions of urban dwellers face undernutrition every single day, though this is far more related to their lack of income than to the lack of capacity to produce food in these areas. Beyond improved seeds and crop protection tools, other technologies enable farmers to increase their productivity, such as the modern irrigation practices, crop management products, mobile technology, fertilizers, and mechanization management and softwares for managing their farms. Land constraint simply means that there is a scarcity of land or a shortage of land to be developed for various uses. These uses may include recreational, transport, agricultural, residential and commercial. Unfortunately, people often started their cities on soil best developed for agriculture. 
Monoculture farming is the planting of the same crop in the same place each year. This unfortunately leaches nutrients from the earth and leaves the soil weakened and unable to support healthy plant growth. Because the structure and quality of the soil is so poor, farmers are often forced to use chemical fertilizers to enrich the soil and encourage plant production. Most of our world's staple foods are produced through monoculture. Land degradation can be due to the misuse of soil and vegetation beyond the ecosystem's ability to recover fully. This is the cause of this misuse are often population pressures that have resulted in overgrazing. Access to food is influenced by political, social and economic factors. Through pol politics, we need an equitable distribution of foods, types of markets and the infrastructure for these markets. And under the economy, we look we're looking at affordability and purchasing. When a handful of corporations owns the world's seed, pesticide and biotechnology industries, they control the fate of food and farming worldwide. This is an historically unprecedented situation. In agriculture, it enables them to control all the research, dictate trade and agreements, position their technologies as the science-based solutions, as well as subvert competitive markets. When people have less money, oh, they can't afford food and they often become unable to work, unfit. Families in developing countries spend most of their income on food. This is the century of cities and food supply is one of the major challenges we face. Furthermore, the globalization of food tastes are causing under and over nutrition to become more dominant. With more food choices in urban areas, the westernized diet is becoming more predominant. Food stability can be ensured when there is permanent and durable access to food. Unfortunately, climate change will have a huge effect on food availability through the adverse impact on yields and production. Flooding that becomes more frequent and more intense is already picking up. Flooding events can furthermore present a potential hazardous public health risk in that the food may become effect, um, infected or contaminated, consequently becoming unsafe for human consumption. An increase in drought frequency, duration and severity is also leading to severe food loss. If we assume, however, that nutritious food is available and accessible, then the household has to decide what food it needs to purchase and how to prepare it, as well as how to consume and allocate it within the household. The distribution of food as well as the biological utilization of food determines the nutritional status of individuals. If you like this presentation, why don't you share it with a friend? Um, and then remember to subscribe. Or also check out some of these other videos and playlists on human impact on the environment. Maybe some of them will interest you.